You're about to watch a Trains Newswire video. If you enjoy what you see, consider watching some of our other full-length videos. Selling Sunshine, the Florida Trains. Locomotive 2017, a video companion to our best-selling annual issue. Big Steam is back. All of these and more are available from our website, KalmbachHobbyStore.com. Good morning, Trains Nation. Today is Friday, March 2nd, 2018. All day. Until midnight. Dun, dun, dun. It's our shtick. Hey, we're so glad you could join us for another episode of Trains Newswire Roundup. I am Steve Sweeney. Hi, Jim Wren here, and we've got plenty of news. Mm -hmm. Just this morning, I counted our 30th Newswire story of the week, yep. and there'll be more coming where that, is, where that comes from. Right now, Steve and I are going to talk about the moment of the week and the quote of the week that we're still working on interpretation. Ronald L. Batori, new Federal Railroad Administration Administrator, says he will pursue safety with, quote, unrelenting vigor. What? Unrelenting vigor? I, I mean, there's a lot of different contexts you could read this into, but let's just make it FRA and safety. And you know, there's th been a lot of there's been a lot, a lot of talk on PTC. Lot, Congress isn't happy. We've had a lot of fatal derailments yep. lately. You know, I mean, it's a it's a sensitive time to be in that job, and and I think everyone wants to take it with all seriousness. And of course, you know, the the truth of the matter is that uh, Batori's uh, nomination was mm -hmm. delayed for months. It was held up in Congress and mm -hmm. all the wrangling and, and deal making that they right. they make on until some folks in New York and New Jersey decided to relent finally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting quote. I interpreted it as you know there are a lot of people are saying that the Trump administration is going to be soft on industry and soft on safety. I right. think I interpret that as as Batory coming in there and saying mm -hmm. it's a tough time in the railroad business and everybody's demanding utmost in safety. I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, and and I and I I took it just you know a little bit less in the Trump administration and and more about Batori personally. You know, Ron Batori is a former railroad executive, former Conrail chief, and former Belt Rail Belt Railway of Chicago chief. He's had to deal with all of these executives for decades. Mm -hmm. He knows how to talk the talk, mm -hmm. walk the walk, and I think this was a shot across the bow or a shot in front of the train, so to speak, to say, look, there's a lot of things we got to get done. PTC is the big one. And I'm not letting you guys off the hook. You know, and he, he, and he's a lifelong railroader. He, he yep. knows it, you know, from, you know, connecting air hoses and, you know, setting handbrakes, knocking them off, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, so, uh, all the way up to the, to the uh, top offices, like you said. So yeah. a, lot, uh, a lot of riding on his shoulders and a lot Absolutely. of work to be done. And uh, we wish those guys the best. I, can we jump off onto PTC for a minute? Please do. So this week, in addition to Ron Batori being um, sworn in as FRA Administrator, we had another congressional hearing, this time in front of the Senate, and there was also a report from the Government Accountability Office. Now that was really the interesting thing. The Senate hearing was a little bit of dramatics and theatrics, but the GAO report said as many as two-thirds of the nation's commuter railroads will not have or are in danger of not having positive train control or qualifying for extensions under the rules by the end of this year. That That's a problem. <laughs> that includes New Jersey Transit. That in probably includes Metrolink and a few others. That's, I mean, that's a significant number of people using railroads who won't be able to if things stay as they if are. If things stay as they are. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just wonder if maybe this is the first, you know, inkling we're going to see that yeah. maybe the deadline's going to get pushed back. Maybe there's going to be some specific exemptions. Yeah. Again, you know, there's that tension between, you know, we've, we've already missed one PTC deadline. Now we're mm -hmm. looking at another. You know, how does how does all this play out? You know, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, with with Ron Batori's quote about pursuing safety with unrelenting vigor, if you look back just a couple of years to Sarah Feinberg, who was the FRA chief, when this deadline issue was being talked about for, for you know, 2015, 2016, she said at the time that we're going to find railroads every day if they don't meet the deadline or unless Congress passes a new deadline. I I think Ron might actually go there. Yeah. It'd be interesting, or see the railroad shut down. It's going to be interesting. So yeah. we got all those stories on Newswire, and we got more coming. We got more coming, wow. so please check those out. Um, I got some CSX news. I, I was just about to say, can we talk about CSX now? And um, Bigfoot, Jim. Yes, we should. <laughs> we were talking about just off camera about yeah. should we? Is it time to go with the foot jokes yet? And uh, you know, my 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 comment was going to be, is CSX off on the right foot finally? 
Uh, it is. They had their investor day earlier this week. Mm -hmm. They talked about uh, you know how they feel like they're on the right track. They right. they they feel like Hunter Harrison laid the groundwork for what they want to go forward with. Mm -hmm. uh, they talked about how their intermodal strategy is changing and shifting. They're doing away with the hub and spoke system. They're going to be yep. point to point. Uh, they they report that they've got uh, better better dwell times, better train average train speeds. Yep. Uh, so they they seem to be doing a lot of the right things now. Uh, you know, it, it's just in, it's going to be interesting to watch how it all unfolds and, and just see what they can make out of this because obviously they want to run a better railroad mm -hmm. and they say they want to do that at the same time while they give the shareholders back some more cash. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's what they're going for. And they say right now they have the best statistics in the industry. Okay. Two key numbers to take away from this. Three and 20. Three is the number of years they give themselves on their growth plan. And 20 is 20% 20 that they're cutting back on equipment and equipment used on the railroad, including car turns and employees. Right. So by 2020, uh, and in three years that is, CSX wants to have 20% less of everything on the railroad to get those wonderful numbers for shareholders. Right. So in three years, let's see if they're still holding out on that. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting. Uh, can you can you save me for more serious stuff? I, I thought we had some kind of interesting steam yeah. this week, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, there were, there, were, there, were, there were some interesting steam stories this week. Um, there's a rare mileage trip on the Reading and Northern yes, in May. Yes, very cool. It's going to benefit that really handsome uh, Boston, Maine, Pacific up at Steamtown. Mm -hmm. uh, restorations uh, moving on, on on that one. We need to see some more uh, money come in there. The uh, NRHS chapter that's the sponsor of that project says they want to come up with $218,000 this year. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of um, money to keep that project moving forward. So uh, definitely, um, you know, something, something there. Uh, then of course, uh, the uh, uh, folks down in Louisiana, or excuse me, Texas, yep. Port Arthur, Texas, yep. um, they've delayed their decision on uh, exactly how to save this Louisiana and Arkansas 10 wheeler down there that was threatened by a, a scrapper. Uh, but it looks like that's gonna, gonna move forward at a future date. Uh, but there is the money in, in place now to save that locomotive. And then um, just uh, just talking to the folks at the Coombrays and Toltec this mm -hmm. week, uh, they're moving forward on their historic car project. They're going to outshop the first of four historic cars on the railroad mm -hmm. uh, this summer, which is going to be a coach. You know, they've used box, converted box cars, they've used replica passenger cars for years and years, and these won't be like everyday cars. Right. But special trains. Special events. Uh, yeah. Recreate a, a typical train of the of the uh, early 20th century out of this thing. So. Good news out of, out of Antonito, Colorado. Now, now we're doing a lot. We're doing a little bit more with uh, Coombers and Toltec later this year, right? We are. We are. We, we're sponsoring a, 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 a photographer's event, mm -hmm. August 25th, 26th, to commemorate the last freight train on Coombers Pass back in 1968, 50 years ago. Wow. St uh, tickets still available? Tickets are still available. We're up to uh, 42 out of 72 tickets sold. So dwindling down fast. Yeah. Get yours while they last. Get yours call while the, they call last. the Coombers and Toltec. Check out the website and then yeah, call the Coombers and Toltec. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, did you eat breakfast today, Jim? I did. Dang it, because there's a toaster headed our way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We and could have had that toaster. Dang, Dang it. Uh, AEM seven is somewhere in Chicagoland right now, and rumor has it that it'll be headed to the Illinois Railway Museum soon. It'll be the first preserved toaster. It looks like a big box electric locomotive made by EMD in cooperation with the Swedes back in the 70s and 80s. Now I thought Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania got one of those, didn't they? Uh, oh, that's right, they did. They, they do have right. one. Yeah, Th That's right, they do so. have one. But but there's one coming to the Midwest, yeah. so which is which It's all hard to have two of these things. That's right. I kind of like them. Yeah, Not they're really likes cool. Them, but I like them. They're cool locomotives. So that, that's pretty good. Um, we can't we can't end today, uh, even though it's supposed to be a nice weekend up here in the Upper Midwest and some sunshine. Mm -hmm. Some sunshine. We can't end today without talking about hot spots. Our episode today brought to you by Hot Spots, the latest special issue from Trains Magazine. It's got dozens and dozens and dozens of the best locations to watch trains or to relax and just absorb railroad scenery. And uh, you know, we picked out a lot of locations. Um, Hatchby's in here, I believe. Hatchby's in there. Cajon is in here. Balin, yep. Balin, Balin, yep. Balin, New Mexico yep. is in here, and a whole bunch of others. And Jim, I just wanted to ask you what uh, what one is what one made this that you didn't expect to make? Ooh. What, what one? What one that we chose that you, you thought? Oh, I didn't think of that one before. Yeah, there's a lot of them in there. And in fact, Brian and you know Brian and I had gone through the list and, and figured out which ones we had been to on the ground, which ones we had ridden through on the train. Oh, that's right. And uh, we really haven't done anything with that. We really should do something with that lately. But uh, yeah, there's the, there's tons of them in there. It's more of the question of which ones I haven't been to that I want to okay. go see. And uh, I've got a trip coming up later this month that's going to take me to Berlin. 
-hmm. So that'll be nice. And, and I'm looking forward to getting to back there after many years away. Absolutely, absolutely. You can pick up this uh, copy. You can pick up videos that are related to this on our website, Kalmbach Hobby Store. Dot com and be sure to check out our website trainsmag.com for all the latest in news for everyone at trains have a great weekend take care everyone